Welcome to this YSL Lexel VBA video. In this very short tutorial, we're going to describe a quick way that you can use to speed up the way your code runs by disabling screen updates. So very quickly, what you're going to learn in the video is, first of all, about the screen updating property and how you can, of course, turn it off. We'll show you how you can create a simple timer system so that you can reassure yourself that you are actually saving time by adding this code to your routines. And then we'll finish off with a slightly more complex example that hopefully makes it a bit more relevant for the real world. So not very much to do, it's a fairly short, simple video, but let's get started. OK, so the basic idea behind this technique is simply to stop your screen from updating while your program runs. And in doing so, it means that Excel doesn't have to continually redraw the screen to reflect any changes made to the workbook. The whole thing just gets updated once right at the very end, which should mean that the whole program runs faster. So to demonstrate the principle, we're going to write a really simple program that's well, basically it's just going to perform a bunch of different actions. It doesn't really matter what those actions are. We just want something to be, to be visibly happening in the background of the screen the first time we run it. Then we'll turn off screen updating and see how much more quickly it runs. So to get started, we'll need to head back into the Visual Basic Editor, which as always, you can head to either the Developer tab and click the Visual Basic button, or just press Alt and F11 on your keyboard. Once you're there, I've already started by inserting a module, which you'll need to do as well, so you can do that by right-clicking somewhere and choosing Insert Module, as usual. And then we'll begin a new subroutine in here. Um, and our subroutine, well, all it's going to do is colour in a whole bunch of cells. So I'm going to call my subroutine uh, colour in, if I can spell colour properly, colour in a bunch of cells. We're actually going to colour in a bunch of different cells across multiple different worksheets. And to achieve that, we're going to write a couple of nested for each loops. So to make that work, we'll need to have a couple of variables declared. Let's declare one that can hold a reference to a worksheet object, first of all. So dim ws as worksheet. And we'll also need one that can hold a reference to a range object, or so we'll say dim r as range as well. To loop over the worksheets, we can say for each ws in worksheets. And you'll recognize this sort of code if you've watched our video on the for each loop and looping over collections of objects. Um, it's always worthwhile closing your loop, or at least I always find it is worthwhile closing your loop before you forget to do it later on. So I'll say next ws, and then we can start filling in the detail. So each worksheet that we want to, uh, to look at, I'd like to select. Um, this is not the most efficient way to achieve the end result that we're, we're going for here. The point of this routine, again, is just to make sure that something visibly happens on the screen in the background. So we will physically select the worksheet to make sure we can see that happening. Once we've reached the worksheet, we're then going to loop through a bunch of cells on that sheet. So we'll have another for each loop that's going to say for each R in a range of cells. Let's say range A1 to R20 or so. That should do. And then again, I'm going to close the for each loop. I'm going to say next R and then fill in the details. Once again, it's not necessary to do this at all, other than to make something visi uh, visibly happen on screen. But I'm going to select the cell that my variable points to, and then I'm going to change its background colour. So I'm going to say r.interior.color equals, I don't know, let's say RGB red. And that is essentially the whole routine written. Um, as I say, the point is that something will visibly happen in the background when we run this code in Excel. So to see the effect, all we should need to do is head back into Excel, which I'm going to do by hitting the little Excel button, or again, press Alt and F11. And then from the Developer tab in the ribbon, we're going to head to the Macros option, or press Alt and F8 on your keyboard. And from there, select the macro you've just written, and then choose to run it. And we should see, one by one by one, every single one of these cells being selected, and each worksheet in turn being selected. You can physically see that Excel had to redraw the screen every single time something changed. So that's horrendously inefficient. So what we're going to do now is change the routine so that it doesn't refresh the screen when the code runs. Um, we'll change the color as well to make it a bit more obvious that something's happening. Um, and we should see a, a big difference in terms of how long it takes for the code to run. So heading back to the Visual Basic Editor, we're going to, first of all, let's change the color so it goes from red to, let's say, green this time. And then right at the start of the routine, just before any actual actions happen, we're going to stop the screen from updating. So to make that work, we're going to add a single line that says application dot screen updating equals false. So all we need to do now is once again head back into Excel and then from the developer tab in the ribbon, bring up the macros list again and choose the same subroutine and choose to run it. And hopefully this time you'll see that it's virtually an instant change, and we appreciate we're not doing a huge amount of work here, but you could hopefully detect even then, although we didn't officially time it, that there was a distinct difference in how long it took to run the code the first time round, and how long it took to run it the second time. 
And if you extrapolate that to sort of how much work you'd be doing in a normal proper program, you can see that hopefully this screen updating property is a really, really useful way to save an awful lot of time when your code runs. Now, although we didn't officially time how long it takes for our code to run, it's not too difficult to add some basic code to create a simple timer system. So to do that, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And the basic idea behind this technique is to record the start time and the end time of the code running, and then subtract one from the other, a quick little multiplication to work out how long it takes to run in seconds. So we'll need to declare a couple of extra variables to make this work. Let's declare the start time and end time as date. Data types will have dim start time as date and end time as date as well. Um, just be careful about declaring multiple variables on one line, by the way, in case you haven't watched our previous videos, you'll see a lot of people tending to do things like this, the, uh, dim start time, comma, end time as date, which does make it look as though you've declared two date variables, but you haven't. You've only declared one date variable, which is end time, and start time is a variant. So make sure you always declare the type for every variable, even if you declare multiple variables on the same line. We'll also have a variable to record the number of seconds or the time elapsed or the time taken. Let's say time taken as, I'm going to go for double for this, so we'll be able to see uh, uh, decimal places rather than just whole seconds. All we need to do then is take the time at which our code starts running. So after the variable declarations, we'll have uh, start time. Start time equals time, which is a built-in function or property of VBA, so it records the time at which uh, uh, which you call it, and then we'll have also end time down at the bottom, end time equals time as well. Now what we have to do is subtract one from the other to work out the difference between them. So we can say uh, time taken equals end time minus start time, and in fact I'm going to parenthesize that as well, so we'll have, we'll have end time minus start time. And then we need to simply multiply that. So that will give us the, uh, the time in units of one day. So to work out the time in seconds, we need to multiply that by the 24 hours in a day, multiply by the 60 minutes in an, in an hour, and then multiply by the 60 seconds in a minute. And that will give us the time in seconds. All we need to do then is display that back to the end user somehow. So a simple way to do that is using a message box. So we can say message box, and we'll just display time taken. Okay, a couple of extra quick little changes then. We'll, uh, we'll choose a different colour this time just to make sure that it's actually working. So we'll have RGB blue. And I think we'll make it do a little bit more work as well. So rather than just A1 to R20, let's say, let's go to Z50 instead. Um, we'll run this with uh, the screen updating turned on, first of all. So we will see the, the changes being reflected in the background. So what we need to do at this point is head back into Excel and then we need to run the subroutine. Okay, so we can head to the macros list again, and then choose a subroutine and hit the run button, and away it will go. So it's taking a little bit longer this time, and again you can clearly see it all happening in the background. Hopefully it's not going to kill Excel. Oh dear, that doesn't look very good. This laptop's a little bit flaky. There we go, eventually it comes back. Just over 9 seconds for the whole thing to run. Okay, so let's hit OK on that one, and then let's turn screen updating off, and then test it again. So let's head back to the VB editor. And let's bring back the line that we commented out earlier on. So we uh, we uh, turn the screen updating off. And then we will also change the colour one more time as well. So rather than blue, let's have it yellow this time. OK, then back to Excel one more time. And we will attempt to run it once more and see how long it takes with screen updating turned off. Less than a second, just. There we go. Um, so that much more efficient. You can't see the, uh, the screen hasn't finished updating yet because the code hasn't finished running, of course. If I click OK, you can see it has gone yellow. So all that happened in the background there, the, the screen only updates at the end of the procedure when you have screen updating turned off. So though it looked like it hadn't worked and it told me it had happened in less than a second, it actually had, just because the subroutine hadn't ended yet. So, um, I mean, that demonstrates clearly how much fast your code can run with screen updating turned off. And hopefully you're going to find that useful in real world examples. Speaking of real-world examples, this workbook contains a bunch of slightly more sophisticated subroutines whose job is to take this complete list of films and separate them out based on what genre they belong to. So you may well have seen this example used in several of the previous VBA videos. Um, there's about 160 rows of data in here, and the idea is that the, the subroutine will loop through the range of cells and identify which genre the film belongs to. 
if we have a worksheet for that genre already, it will simply copy that row of data into the new into the existing sheet. If the genre doesn't already exist, then a new worksheet gets created automatically. So it's, the code isn't that sophisticated. I'll show it to you briefly. I've already written it. Um, the idea isn't that, that we work through this one together. What I'll attempt to do is, is put a link up so you can download this example yourself. So I'll put that link in the description below the video. Now it might take a little while for that to appear, so uh, just be patient for that one if you don't mind. Um, so the idea is we're, we're looping through the range of cells on the movies worksheet uh, using a do until loop, and inside there we're testing, um, we're picking up the genre for each film first of course, um, and then we're testing if the worksheet already exists. And to do that we're using a custom function that I've written uh, called cheat exists, and if it doesn't already exist it creates one for us automatically. Um, so that happens there. And then back on the movie sheet, we then copy the entire row of data, paste it onto the appropriate worksheet, move down one cell, back to movies, move down one cell, and then loop back to the top and work out whether we're, we've reached a blank cell at the bottom of the list yet. And it carries on doing that until it reaches the end of the list. So again, we've got the same, same little timer system in place as we had last time. Um, so all we're going to do is show you what happens when we run this one. First of all, with screen updating turned on, so the standard, and then we'll turn it back off again, and so we can see the difference. So let's head back into Excel and we'll run the routine first of all with screen updating turned on. So back to the developer tab in the ribbon and macros, separate films by genre and then click the run button. And as you can clearly see, screen is updating in the background. Um, this horrible flickery mess that's going on. I guess that's another nice feature of the screen updating being turned off. You don't see this horrible uh, flickering in the background as well. So the whole thing looks a lot neater and just, just over eight seconds for that procedure to run. So we can hit OK at that point and then we'll switch back into the Visual Basic Editor again and we'll turn screen updating off again by uh, just uncommenting the line application.screenupdating equals false back into Excel again. I'll tidy up first of all, I've written another routine that actually deletes all the existing worksheets just so it's a fair test, it essentially resets everything back to uh, back to the standard original state. So delete all but movies, I'll run that one. Those are all gone again. Just make sure we're back in uh, cell A1 again, so put us back in the original position and then back to macros separate films by genre and click the run button and hopefully this time it will take a lot less time than eight seconds so just over two seconds with screen updating turned off so not quite as big a time saving as the previous example although it's doing a slightly different job of course it's not quite exactly the same um, same example as you'd expect um, and again this is just for 160 rows of data extrapolate this up to a real world example that's potentially 160,000 rows of data or even more and you can imagine the sorts of time savings you're going to achieve by adding this simple single line of code to your subroutines um, it is such a simple easy thing to do well worth bearing in mind if you weren't aware of it hopefully you're going to find that useful in the real world so thanks for watching see you next time if you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.